as you know, a few months ago, I met Miss Martha, and I just thought that it was going to be a different occupation change, um, just a new job and everything like that, but actually I was receiving much more, and I didn't even realize it. I would come over, and in the mornings, her and Caleb, looking right at the camera, <laughs> her and Caleb, they would be doing Bible study, and at that time, I didn't realize that it was touching me and actually affecting me. And so, after a while, I start feeling like, maybe you need to give your life over to the Lord. Maybe it's time for a change. And then a part of me was like, no, it's just you're coming over here every day. And I tried to fight against it. And the more I would come and they would be doing Bible study, it became interesting. It was just like I was reading a book. It wasn't very old and boring. It was just like exciting and new. And it was weird because I've heard all these Bible stories all my life, but they were actually like jumping out at me. So um, I was just led to give my life over to the Lord and to make some changes. I was just to a point in my life where I was just tired. I was tired of being the same Farah. I was tired of doing the same things. I was tired of not getting results in life. And I just had to really figure out that life is not possible or anything's not possible without God. And ever since I decided to give my life over to the Lord, He's been showing me th things in very different ways. Um, I had a friend pass away on me, passed away on me last month. And when she passed away on me, it was so unreal because I turned right around and my maintenance man, don't know my maintenance man, never knew him. He did the same thing. He killed himself. And it was like so weird because that night that he killed himself, I had the devil come to me and like in my dreams and he was trying to tell me that the Lord didn't love me and he couldn't save me and anything like that. And even in my dreams, I was so afraid being so close to the devil that the only thing I could do was pray. And I was stuttering because I was scared. I never had an experience like that. But the next morning when I woke up and I found out about the maintenance man, it was like I was just tying links together because my maintenance man died. The devil came to me in my dreams. I just had a friend die. It was just very overwhelming at the time. Um, not only that, I've had the Lord just show me different scriptures in the Bible to comfort me, to make me feel better. Uh, he, he's just He's just changing me and I can't even explain how he makes me feel. Even when I'm reading the Bible, sometimes I'll read the Bible and I'll just have like these out-of-body experiences. I lost a good friend during my change too um, and nothing happened to her. It's just she didn't fully understand my transition and because I, everything is so new to me, I felt like I wasn't strong enough to carry her with me and I wasn't strong enough to fight my battle and her battle. So the only thing I could do was walk away from her. And that was hard, but I can't refuse God or Jesus because of a friend. That's not a friend. If you're my friend, you'll support me and whatever I decide to do. So that was a big transition. Me deciding to stop doing the things that I was doing before, um, hanging out, partying and all that, big transition. But I can't explain to you how God started to fill that gap, that I, that void I felt like I needed. And um, I hate to get emotional because it's just, it's amazing the things that he's doing for me. It is just, I didn't know. So I'm just like so excited. I'm not going to tell a lie. I'm very <laughs> nervous about being baptized today. And I feel like the devil tried to play with me by messing with my car this morning. But I'm here, and I'm just like taking deep breaths. I'm, I'm just going to be so happy when we get to that point where we're in the pool, and I go back in the water and come back up. In my crazy head, I feel like I'm not going to come back up, but I know God won't allow that. So that's why I'm here right now. <laughs> that's it. 
So um, let us let us begin with, with prayer. Oh, glorious God, we are thankful for the, the witness of Jesus Christ, who himself came to the rivers of the Jordan, and he submitted to your will, and he was baptized by John. And we know the words of pleasure that you spoke as he rose out of the waters and as he embraced fully the ministry to which you called him and the ministry to which you call us to die to self, to be cleansed by you, and to go forth and to manifest you in our life as your spirit rests upon us. Bless and sanctify these moments here. For we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. As the dear Jesus from the time of his baptism. 
from the time of his baptism. That is how important the baptism was to, to or is to God, and that's how important it is to Jesus. That's how important it was to the apostles, that the candidate that was fit would be one who was with Jesus at that moment. They, uh, from that time forward, and they, they knew, they knew, they knew. And after Pentecost in Acts 2, baptism became inherently connected with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And after Pentecost, Peter's sermon proclaimed the risen Christ. The apostles immediately baptized those who believed. And in Acts 10, Cornelius, the centurion of the Italian cohort, spoken of in Acts 10, 1, and his entire household are baptized by Jesus, or by Peter, excuse me. They're baptized by Peter. And after the Holy Spirit descended on all the people present for Peter's sermon in Acts 10, Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of, the, in the name of Jesus Christ. And in Acts 16, Paul and Silas baptized the Philippian jailer when he surrenders to God. And these are words that are, are descriptive of, again, that this is a a big deal. Uh, this is a, it's a sacrament. This is something that Jesus is both submitted to and it's something that he command, commands every single disciple to do, to be baptized in the name of God. Pharaoh and I and Martha and others, as we, we talked, we didn't intentionally uh, plan this to be on Epiphany. Uh, we were uh, we've, we've met, we've talked, and, and, uh, and I began to talk to the pastor here, uh, Brother Larry, and, and uh, this was the day that, that uh, we thought, because this was the day that opened up for him, and, and it was good for us, and, and yet it falls on Epiphany. Epiphany means manifestation. During the season of Epiphany, we remember the baptism of Jesus. We, we did not plan that. God did. God planned the day for your baptism. God knew it when you were conceived, even before you were conceived in your mother's womb, that He would call you and that you would respond and that you would be discipled and that you, in obedience to fulfill the righteousness of God, would be baptized on January 6th, 2013, as a sign of the manifestation of the risen Lord Jesus. What a, what a gift God has, has given to us today, both to Pharaoh and to we who are gathered here. For when we are with Pharaoh, we will be making commitments to her. She will be answering some questions that I will ask, but I will also ask you these questions, and I, I encourage you uh, to weigh those. And if you're not ready to say yes, then I would encourage you to wait. But as you say yes, to follow through on it, to pray for her when the Lord calls you, to pray for her, to, to call her when... Um, when the Lord would put that on, on you and to remember your own baptism and to be thankful for what God has done and is doing in your life. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, I thank you today for this marvelous gift. For you have called Pharaoh by name. You gave your life for her that she would know you as her Lord and Savior. And so today I, I pray that, that as we go forward, that we would remember our baptism, that we would be thankful. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen.
has given her life to Jesus. And as an act of obedience to fulfill the righteousness of God, she will be baptized this day. And Farah, I ask you, do you repent of your sins? Yes. Will you walk in the path that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I'll ask you, each of you, will you so live that you will that you will support Pharaoh as she lives as a disciple of Christ? Yes. Will you remember your baptism today and be thankful? Amen. Amen. Woo